in this video, we'll talk about piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are essentially a function where instead of just one equation to represent it, you need multiple equations because the function is doing different things. It's looking like a different equation on different sets of x values. The name for the sets of x values are called domains, right? So on this domain, where x is less than 3, this is the function we're going to graph. And on this other domain, this is the function we're going to graph. These domains over here can't overlap with each other because otherwise you wouldn't know which equation applies because only one can apply. So that's just like what piecewise functions are. This is a really vague, broad term. It's not like a class of functions. It's just like any function that, that needs to be written with multiple lines, depending on the x values, is called piecewise. So first of all, just a simple question. With this function, if you're asked what's f of 5 equal to, well, a lot of people just say, oh yeah, f of 5, so I just plug in 5 for x and then evaluate it, right? But the one thing you got to do first is just make sure you're plugging it into the correct domain. This only applies for x values less than or equal to 3. Since 5 is greater than 3, it's the second domain that we're going to look in. So really, f of 5 is just whatever the function out, whatever this second function outputs, not what this first one does, right? So here to answer the question, what is f of 5? Just plug in 5 over here so you get negative 5 plus 19. So I guess that would be 14, right? So that's how you do that. We'll say more broadly, we're asked to graph the function. Let's graph this function. So graphing out the x and y axes here, essentially, this function is this mx plus b, 2x plus 10, meaning the intercept is 10 and the slope is 2. So it's like this. And it's like that everywhere up until x is 3. So it's 3 or less. So at 3, here now we stop. And we now instead graph this, this downward sloping line. Now, it might help to first think about what is this downward sloping line. It, starts at 19, and then its slope is negative 1, so it's going down, and basically at x equals 3, this guy's going to be at 16. So essentially, to see if this piecewise function is continuous or not, meaning, like here, for example, this is a negative slope, so we don't know, like, just looking at it, it might, like, look like this, right? In which case, there's some discontinuity there. At 3, it jumps abruptly from whatever it is here to whatever it is here, right? So to see if it's continuous or not, we really just want to see uh, when x is 3, so at the turning point, what is each of these functions doing? So at 3, when we plug in 3 over here, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 10, that's 16. So we know this function is at 16, 3 comma 16. This other function at 3, I guess negative 3 plus 19 is also 16. Ah, okay. This downward sloping blue function, right? So essentially, in a way, it's like this green function, you're only looking at to the left of 3, so we're cutting it off there. But this blue function, you're only looking at it to the right of 3, right? This negative x plus 19 is this blue function here. So, But if you look at that just to the right of 3, you're going to get like this, right? So overall, the way to graph this function is it's this upward sloping line up until 3, and then bam, it's continuous because both of these are at 16 at the turning point, but then bam, it's just like it's a sharp corner and now it's this downward sloping line, right? But again, piecewise function, that's a broad, vague term and it could be used to describe any sets of anything. So like, uh, let's do another example here. Let's say this question says, suppose that the demand is given by this expression, okay? So that's like quantity and price and I guess if the price is $10, then, you know, 10 times 2 is 20, so 100 minus 20 is 80, so the quantity is 80, right? So that's like the demand. But it's saying that the demand is, you know, obviously never, never, never negative, and write this as a function. So in a way, this is not a demand function, because what if I said the price was 1,000? Then this would be saying that the quantity demanded is like 100 minus 2 times 1,000, so 100 minus 2,000, is like negative 1900. But we don't actually mean that this person is demanding negative 1900. We'd probably say that they're demanding zero, right? Because you can't demand a negative quantity. And similarly, the price probably can't be negative. So really, 
what what you want here is essentially to figure out if this is your function, where exactly does this quantity start becoming negative, right? So we can ask ourselves, you know, when is this quantity zero? We can figure that out. So zero equaling 100 minus 2p, if we were to solve for that, have 2p to both sides, 2p is 100, divided by 2p is 50. So what this means is for this function, if we were to graph like price here and quantity demanded here, I guess the intercept here is 100 and the slope is negative 2. So that's like the intercept is 100 and the slope is negative 2. So this function looks like this, right? If this is a pure mx plus p, and as we just saw when the x value p is 50 here, that is where the quantity is 0. If you want to say that the demand is like this line, but over here when it becomes negative, instead it's 0, instead it like turns into this green function of just this flat line at zero, and now we want to erase this here. The way we'd write that, this as one single function, is we'd say that this, uh, here's what we'd say, we'd essentially say this function, uh, this q equals, let's see, it's equal to that, that line, the same equation 100 minus 2p, specifically when p is less than 50. Right, less than, or you could even say equal to 50. But the quantity is literally just zero for the domain of p is greater than 50. Right? That's one way to do it. So that's like a lot more realistic. This, again, this looks complicated. If you've never heard of what piecewise functions are, and I just gave you this, like, graph this, you'd be like kind of confused, like, oh my gosh, like, what's this 50? Like, what is this? But really, this is just a fancy way of saying, draw this mx plus b. Oh, but like, for x values of 50 onwards, just make it flat instead of going negative, right? So often piecewise functions are simplistic things, but uh, they're often written in a complicated way. So this particular problem, we might even say, in fact, you know, prices shouldn't be negative either. So we'd want to cut this function off here and say, you know what? Yeah, for negative prices, we just don't even want this to be defined, right? So in that case, we just wanted to like start at prices of zero, right? So in that case, we could amend this domain. Instead of saying p is less than 50, we could say p is starting at zero, so zero to 50, right? So for p values, for prices of zero to 50, this is the quantity demanded. And then 50 onwards, the quantity demanded is zero. So this is the more full version of demand.